Now let's talk about what do you do if you've got a heckling audience member? What we have to do here is start with the term heckling. What do you mean when you say the word heckling? For most people, myself included, when I think of hecklers, I think of those drunks in comedy clubs who are yelling and screaming and trying to disrupt the comedian. It often becomes very confrontational. In my years of speaking, and I've been speaking since 1994, and I have world-class mentors who've been doing it as long as me, none of us has ever dealt with someone who was so out of control that it was like that scene that you're picturing if you're thinking of a comedy heckler redefine what you mean by disruptive audience member. Probably heckler is not the right word to use. Second point here is always be respectful. If someone is challenging what you say, it, whether it's online or in person, they may keep coming back at you. Give them a couple of opportunities to challenge and then maybe try to reword what you're saying to explain it. And if they're still not getting it, you've got to respectfully tell them that this is something that clearly we're not on the same page on. Maybe I'm not explaining it well. So let's talk about this offline. That is the best way to handle somebody who's giving you a challenge. I'm going to give them two shots. And then if I've, if I've positioned it to where I can say, I want to respect your time and the audiences, guess who's on your side now? At that point, almost all the time, the audience is going to shut that person up. Remember what you heard in an earlier video. People are too busy. They don't have time for some know-it-all who wants to show what he or she knows to the rest of the world. They don't have time for that. So chances are they're going to do that for you, but they'll only do it if you're respectful. The third point is what you've heard, protect the audience, protect their time, protect their respect, their integrity. And show them that you can't be flustered by a, a tough question. I mean, sometimes people want to know, can you handle the tough times? If you're in a leadership role, they want to know, can you handle the heat? So it, it is a test. Protect the audience's interest at all times. Even though you may be mad, you don't feel like it, it's going to help you in the long run. Fourth idea here is to don't present yourself or position yourself as someone who is a know-it-all about your topic. You may have an expertise. I mean, there's a reason you've been asked to speak to a group. One of my mentors is a man named Ed Tate. He's a certified speaking professional world champion, and he taught me years ago. The answer is often in the room if you'll let it be. Never forget, unless you are a part of that group that you're speaking to, in other words, you're an expert in their, their field, they have answers you could never come up with. For instance, I'm a communication skills expert, public speaking, storytelling, online presentations. If I'm going into a group of, let's say, automotive distributors to talk about communication skills, but they ask questions specific to cars, they're going to know the answer more than I am. I can put my communication skills perspective on it, but they'll have the answer. Don't keep them from participating and always let one of them be the hero. If they've got a great answer, make a big deal about it. Audiences love when they can show that they have the knowledge and that you're not up there to be the know-it-all. Just keep in mind with this whole concept of the heckler, it rarely happens and they're almost never abusive. If you handle it professionally, take the ideas you've heard here the audience is going to handle that for you most of the time. If not, the meeting planner will step in, but always maintain your integrity, your professionalism, and it will help you go far.